I have made tea because I have an upset stomach and I want to use my pretty pink sweater mug to drink it. It's actually making me feel really warm. Things that I don't like feeling. Eh. Hello men, women, and children of the internet. It is I, Ari. I'm back. And today I want to do a sit down talky vlog about merch. So I was on YouTube all day today and I was wandering around looking through different videos when I saw um, Philip DeFranco's video talking about Zoella's advent calendar. So Zoella is, if you don't know who she is, I'm sure you know who she is. Zoella is a beauty and lifestyle blogger and she has created a 2017 advent calendar which has 12 items that she has curated and created for um, for her brand and she is selling it at 50 pounds a piece. I converted that to pesos and that's about 3,500 pesos. A lot of people are saying that the contents of her advent calendar are overpriced. Honestly, that's a lot of money. 3,500 pesos for the contents of the calendar. You can click around YouTube and see people do unboxings of it and they'll s you can see their reactions um, about that. She, Zoella received a lot of backlash for her advent calendar because of, because of the price and how she reacted towards it and stuff like that. I also saw a video by Caspar Lee who he kind of talked about how YouTubers make money. He pretty much sided with Zoella on the on the on the argument that we may uh, that YouTubers make these things and blah 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 blah. You can click you can look for the video. I'll probably link it in the description. It's been it's been a trend on YouTube. A lot of people have been talking about this for quite some time now. Is that there has been this trend of these lifestyle bloggers, these influencers, these YouTubers making products and scamming people, their fans out of it. They will be making these products and then they'll be um, they put it at a really, really high price because they know that their fans will shell out the money for it. And people have been um, call, have, have been calling them out saying that they've been they're, they're scamming their fans out of greed and it's not a good it's not a good thing. There's a lot of these videos on the internet. I'm sure that you can find just a few in, I mean a few in a quick search. Watching those videos got me thinking about merch and money and I want to talk about this because I now have a lot of younger friends who are into fandom stuff and money has been a bit of an issue. I'm filming this, I'm talking about this because it's about money. Whether we like it or not, money is important. For us members of society, if we want to function, we need money. That's why I'm talking about this. I have a couple of points that I want to discuss about the topic of merch and fandoms and stuff. So if you're interested, please keep on watching. If you are not, you may you may you may move on. These are just my opinions on fandoms and merch and how they and the relationship between the two. Anyway, so first things first. Um, when it comes to fandoms, I am a member of quite a few. Um, I have dabbled into K-pop and YouTube and movies and Marvel and stuff and things and Harry Potter and all sorts of things. Basically, I have a lot of fandoms. Every time something comes up, it's when some new merch or some movie or some new thing, concert or show or whatever decides to come up, my wallet starts crying. I feel like that I have some kind of, I have some experience talking about merch and money. I have a lot of strong feelings about this. So when it comes to merch, particularly when it comes to fandom, fandom, K-pop, YouTube merch, there's this mentality that's been going around for quite some time that 
you're not a real fan if you don't buy merch. I want to say that that mentality is really dumb. <laughs> okay, because that just, I mean, buying merch does not prove anything. You don't need to prove what, if you're a real fan or not. When it comes down to it, we're all fa we're all just the same. We're all people who want to enjoy the thing and appreciate the thing. We don't need to prove anything to anyone if we like something. Just let people enjoy their things, you know? Let's be real. We don't need to prove it. And this holier-than-thou system of you're not a real fan if it's just not worth the effort. I don't find it um, to be productive in any kind of way. Like, why would you need to argue with someone to prove that I am a big fan of so-and-so? It's fine. If you like the thing casually or addictively or you stan it, whatever, if you like it, you like it. It's fine. It doesn't... It's okay. Second point. I want to make is that buying merchandise of your of your faves is ultimately optional. Let's be real, okay? You only have a certain amount of money. Um, if you're a student, which I am right now, you only have a certain amount of money and you need to budget that money for all sorts of things. I always think about how much money I have and how much money the thing, a merchant, a piece of merch costs before I buy the thing. Because if I don't have enough money to spare for the thing, I either don't buy the thing or I save up to buy the thing. Also, like, since my fandoms are like, I have YouTube and K pop and all sorts of things, there are so many ways so many ways to support your faves without spending money actually for example when it comes to youtube i am a huge dan and phil fan shout out to the titas of vanilla group chat if they release a new video then you watch the video you give them a thumbs up that's enough support you're showing support by watching their videos by patronizing their content and by liking the content that they make. That's enough support for them. Your views and your subs are ideally in the machine of YouTube are the most important thing that you can do to support your favorites. Everything else is extra. I always go back to Dan and Phil when it comes to YouTube fandom because Dan always says that you don't have to buy merch. It's hard. It's hard to not have the money to buy things. And that doesn't mean, just because you can't buy things doesn't mean you're less of a fan. So, yeah. In the big scheme of things, in the big YouTube machine, um, their monetization comes from views and likes and, and um, subscribers and comments and all of those things that YouTube has. So everything else is just extra. When it comes to K-pop, I know like a lot of K-pop fans are like, I want to buy the CD so that I can support my group and they can get higher into the music charts and whatever. But particularly if you're a foreign fan, I learned that the sales, the domestic sales are still the most important for the industry. Sales are important, but not being able to buy stuff, not being able to buy the CD and stuff, doesn't make you a bad fan because there are still so many ways that you can support your groups like you can vote for them in award shows you can you can vote for them in your local music scene um, like you know mix and MTV and stuff if they're there you vote for them there so that they so that the group can see that they have a fan base in wherever you're from you can also um, stream their music like on Spotify or Melon or whatever else streaming platforms they have. You can watch them on VLive if, if they do that. They, you can watch them on YouTube also if, you, if they do that. When their videos come out on YouTube, you um, rack up the views so that they can so that they can break their, you know, whatever it is the challenge that they need to do to make um, revenue on those things. We don't have to pay. It's just, you know, that, that, all of that, all of those things that I said are also ways to support your favorites. 
So, my third point is that people have priorities. When you think about your budget as a, a consumer, you always have to think about what you need to prioritize. Is it merch versus food versus tuition fee versus electricity bills versus rent versus all sorts of things. And sometimes there are just more important things that you need to spend your money on and that's okay. As much as merch is supporting your favorite you need to remember that you're a person that has that has needs too. We have the choice to put in the money and support our favorites, but we also have to remember that we have priorities in life. Especially if you're a student, you need to remember that your education is very important and that you shouldn't you shouldn't take that for granted. That's what's going to give you opportunities to make more money in the future or to make a difference in the future whatever it is that your goal is when you when you are employed it starts in your education oh boy i'm going on an education rant i'll talk about that some other time because that's going to be another hour long video it doesn't mean that you don't support them in whatever it is that you're that they're doing it's just that some people just have a little bit more budget to um, to afford these things. If they can afford them, then that's okay. If you can't afford them, that's okay too. Whether or not we have money, we're all here, we're all fans, and we're all here to support our favorites, okay? Bragging about, oh, I have all of these merch and all of this blah blah blah, I have the capacity to do this and that. Bragging and making people feel like they don't matter because they can't afford it is not cool, okay? This elitism and fandoms, especially when it comes to finances, has to end. It's something that we enjoy. It should be fun. It's not fun if we're bringing people down and making people feel bad for not being able to buy stuff. My fourth point is that if you want to buy merch, make sure when you buy merch that it's going to be worth it for you. Pick and choose when it comes to concerts and things because if you attempt to attend all concerts, you're gonna end up broke and hungry and, you know, priorities nga eh. So always um, remember that it's for enjoyment, it's for fun, it's for the experience of being able to remember these things when you're older and not regret and not regret your decision of not going. If you want to buy merch, if you want to buy concert swag or whatever, just make sure that you're buying it for the right reasons. You're buying it for to appreciate and support, not to brag, because that's not cool. I have mentioned this so many times now. In summary, what I want to say is that merch is cool, but optional. You love what you love in the way you can. It's not a requirement to shell out tons and tons of cash to support things that you like. Elitism and bragging is not cool, and in the end, it's all just stuff. When everything is said and done, it's just material possessions. What's more important is your experience, your memories, and your that, that you have fun when it comes to these things. You don't have to shell out money to have fun, just make sure that you have a good time. So yeah, hopefully this video makes sense and that you learn something maybe from my opinions and whatever. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Um, do you want me to talk about other things? Please leave a comment below. I will get back to you on it. So please subscribe if you haven't already. You don't have to, but it would be much appreciated if you did. And I hope you're having a great day, and I will see you soon. Bye!